What's up? What's up? What's up? We're back. We're back. We're back. To those who can't be boxed in, to those who will build a table with or without a label, you are in good company because this is no labels necessary. I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And again, this is no labels necessary. You can't catch us on YouTube, Spotify, clips on TikTok, everywhere that you consume your podcast every single Tuesday, every single Thursday as we explore the intersection of music, culture, and money through hot topics and casual conversation. So let's get into this first topic. As y'all know, we like to start with a little bit of advice, but I want to let y'all know some of the other topics we're going to talk about um, today as well. Number one, all right, we're going to get into that advice. Hold on for it. But we're also going to talk about how you get a job in this industry. If you want to navigate this industry, start making money just beyond your music or maybe until your music pops off. We're also going to talk about the power of branding, using her as a template to break down some of the elements that y'all can grab for yourselves. Making money outside the music, but using music as the platform and you don't have to wait that long. You'll be surprised how early you can start. And last but not least, we're going to get into the problem with fan subscription programs. A lot of y'all are going about doing a subscription program in the wrong way. So we're going to talk about what that looks like, how you should go about it, and some of the major problems that people face. So let's get in topic into topic number one. First and foremost, would you want five hundred thousand dollars, Jacor? Oh, or do a meeting <laughs> with Jay Z? Jay Z, bro. Jay Z, easy. Yeah, easy, bro. Jay Z, easy. I'm meeting with Jay Z. Okay, okay. So, look, y'all might have seen this topic. It's been out there for a while, but I found a clip that says everything I feel like we need to say without us having to say it. So. You know, of course, we want to bring value from y'all, not just from us, but around the world. And this Earn Your Leisure clip says it so perfectly. Check it out right here. Population that's actually commenting on this have never seen $500,000 at one time. And they've never met with a billionaire before. I'm not, this is just a fact, right? So technically you're not qualified to even answer this question. So by the grace of God, we have been able to do both several different times. So we're actually qualified to answer this question. So this isn't a hypothetical for us. It's actually a real life scenario. So I'm going to give you a real life scenario. So this could actually potentially help you in so life. So what happens after that conversation of meeting Steve Harvey? He decides he wants to become business partners with us and we become business partners. We make a, a lot of money from that situation, obviously. So does he. He takes a liking to us and he opens up his network to us. The first person that he introduced us to is Robert Smith, who's the wealthiest black person in American history, right? He makes a connection because of that. So we only know him because of him. So that's a, that's a billionaire that we got introduced to because of him. What else happened because of that? He made an introduction and made it possible for Tyler Perry to come to invest best as a result we get a guided tour tyler perry studio we get to have a conversation with tyler perry live on stage and behind the scenes and we develop a relationship with tyler perry in some regards what else comes from that relationship he makes the introduction and makes it possible for dan kathy the ceo of chick-fil-a one of the richest people in the world worth seven billion dollars to come to invest best. what am i saying here Okay, let's say that we we didn't we never met Steve Harvey. We just took five hundred thousand dollars. So, what people don't realize is that most businesses fail, and most people have never started a business. So, and most people with money end up losing money. So, just because you have five hundred thousand dollars, everybody's like, oh, if I get five hundred thousand dollars, I'm gonna turn that to a hundred million. Well, probably not. Probably not. Even if you invested. Stock market is down. You would have you would you for the year you would have lost money. You would have lost money in crypto. Maybe real estate you would have lost depending on where you invested. There's no guarantee you even would have made. It's not even that easy to flip the five hundred thousand. Okay, you want to start a business. We know that ninety percent of businesses fail, even a higher ratio than that. So just because you have money doesn't mean you're going to be successful. You don't have enough information. You don't have enough knowledge because you don't even have enough resources to actually know what you're doing. So it's like people ridicule and like, oh, that makes no sense. Why would you? Well, I'm just giving you a real life example. Now, this is our story. 
So not to say that this is going to be true for every single person and every single situation is different. Every meeting is not going to work out the way it worked out for us. But just be careful who you're taking information from because everybody's not qualified to speak. 99 point. Not a business man. I'm a business man. <laughs> Let me handle my business down. Hey, so that was a lot to unpack, man. <laughs> beautifully said verse, beautifully timed and planted with that verse, uh, Corey. But like, I have to say this, man. Like, usually we don't play clips that long. I think it was worth playing that clip. Uh, yeah, that should need to be heard. That full clip, yeah. because we know what type of time a lot of people are on, and you know that's the. I don't even want to get into it. I don't, I, you know what? <laughs> But this is the same type of person that will say 500K in most cases are the same type of people who will not consume an hour video. <laughs> <laughs> and they rather just watch a TikTok and expect all the valuable advice and insight to come out of a TikTok versus an hour long video. The sauce cannot be sped up when it's real. You get what I'm saying? But it's a certain mentality. And this is what we need to address more and more because I feel like a lot of people just exploit artists thinking wrong versus mm -hmm. actually trying to explain no that thing that you want is nice and i'm going to try to feed you some shit in a what you in the way that you want it however if you actually want to get to where you want you also are going to have to reprogram how you consume period yeah All right so you know that's kind of aside for me but how do you see that advice i mean like i said i think he said everything yeah, but everything, like that example says it all but like you've had these kind of a lot of conversations with artists that I know like allude to this same type of shit. So what are your thoughts? I mean, he essentially said the network is is not valueless. What what am I looking for? Invaluable, pretty much. Yeah, uh, the, the network the, is your network. That whole comment. Yeah the, yeah, the ceiling on the network is 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 really high, or you you can't even see it right. Versus yep. the money, there's a there's a there's a lot of barriers with like even doing something with it. Cause mm -hmm. I, I know even at the start of the conversation, what I will always think about is I think back like when I was a new business owner, like if somebody just gave me half a million dollars, I probably would have fucked it up. You know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't, I ain't know what to do with it. Right. Yeah. I didn't know where to put it. Yep. I didn't know I probably would have blew it on stupid shit. Yep. And I think like if most people were honest with themselves, like that would be the case for most people. Cause most people aren't taught how to handle that type of money. You know what I'm saying? Or know like what to do with it in the business sense. But the biggest thing is just when he went through all the introductions that he made from this one introduction, right? So from Steve Harvey to whoever, to whoever, to whoever, mm -hmm. to whoever, is like you you can't even really put a number on the value of that network. But if we try, that's probably at least a one to ten billion dollar network right there, right? Which is however many X to five hundred K. Right. Versus he just would have got the five hundred K, went home, and then, you know what I'm saying, they'd be like, oh, okay, well. Fuck it, he just wanted the money. He ain't even about the shit like we about the shit. Because we both know, I don't know if everybody knows this, bro, but like, interestingly enough, the people that are the weirdest about money are people with money. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're the ones that's always like, oh man, it's about the money for you. Like, that's crazy, you know, yeah. because they have so much of it. Like, they don't, they, a lot of them tend to like move outside of there sometimes. And so I think you, like, they would judge you for that. Like, then you're gonna take the money and not even try to attempt to get into my network. Yeah. Like, you, you, you're not fit, you're not cut for this. Bro, with that being said, how many rooms can you not get into no matter how much money you have? Facts. It's plenty of rooms like that. <laughs> and people just assume that, oh, yeah, I'm going to get rich and then they're going to want to do business with me. It's hard. When you have those opportunities, you can't guarantee, oh, just because I have money, I'm going to be able to fuck with these people. Or I'm going to go track them down. Literally, oh, I somehow met his grandma or his cousin and mm -hmm. they – connected me and now I'm in that space and I might not have as much money yet but as a result of being in that space I have money like there there's rooms that you cannot buy yourself into because these people don't need no money yeah so you can't pay them all right and there's people who literally just stop doing things like consultations and and um mentorships because they don't need to oh if I mentor anybody it might just be somebody who happens to be in my network my friends mm -hmm. A uh, son, right, mm -hmm. or someone who somehow makes their way to me, and I take a liking to them. But I'm not trying to do paid mentorships, right? I mean, even with us, right, we've had plenty of offers that we've turned down for people who say, "Oh, yeah, I'll do some work for free," or I'll, mm -hmm. you know, um, for whatever type of money. And it's like, well, that's not enough money for me. It might be enough money for you. I'd rather just spend my time 
working on the thing that I'm working on. Yeah. Right. So that's the biggest thing I think about how many rooms can you just not buy yourself into? And I think that's understated and overrated. But then you talked about when you first became a business owner and not knowing what to do with that 500 K. Yeah. All right. And we overestimate our abilities Mm -hmm. in spaces that we have not yet to be. Yeah. It's like, dog, yeah, I get it. You think that all you got to do is X, Y, and Z, and that's why we're always so smart. Oh, man, I can't believe this person lost all that money. All you have to do is X. All you have to do is Y. Like, you do this, and then you get a financial advisor. It's not that easy, especially 500 k is not that much money, right? You talk about 60 mil, that's enough for you to do some things, lose some taxes, and then have enough money set aside just in case you do some stupid stuff, yeah. you're still good. Five hundred k is not really that that kind of number, yeah. right? Like to be real. So when you think about it, going back to being a business owner and actually knowing what to do with it, how many people win the lottery and then they lose the money? So down there, all of them, right? Yeah. So much so that it's a story when someone doesn't lose money, right? You've heard about those few people who actually kept the money. Now, next question. How many people have you heard won the lottery and flipped the money? Won the lottery and flipped the money. I can't think of one off the top of my head. I'm sure there is one, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. Exactly, bro. Exactly. (laughs) So it's level of skill sets. Keeping money? Which is a skill set in its own. And at that point, you're just preserving, which means you're just dying slow. Investing so you can incrementally, you know, gain, but still really just not lose. So you're managing. And then actually having the skill set to flip it. Just because you get the money, you don't get the skill set overnight. Yeah. And then it's hard to have the willingness to go get a skill set. If you just got some money overnight, it's one thing like, oh, you're working on this business and then you have a windfall through this business, but you are already in this groove where at least it's clearer how you can continue to build this skill. You've built momentum towards building that skill. But if I'm just in college having some fun and then I win a hundred mil. That's it. Like I'm not. <laughs> I'm just gonna go find a skill. I, yeah. I still gotta figure out a skill, yeah. and then building skills are hard. And if it's the right skill, do I like it? All that stuff. You're just gonna stop, yeah, right? Man, you out. It's hard, out there, right? Man. It's yeah. hard. So, like that meeting, man. Like that meeting is, is is it, it's the way for me. It's there's, always been the way. There's like one scenario in which I could see taking the money. Like if if, if a Jay Z consultation is like 300k or less. I'll probably take the money and pay for it. But I feel like it's not. I mean, it probably is around that number. I would guess. I would guess. And if somebody out there works for Jay-Z, please let me know. But I will ballpark a consultation with Jay-Z. Somewhere between quarter mil to a mil. Hey, that is a smart, <laughs> smart approach to it, bro. Because your answer is, hold up, let me check. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. Like, how much you charge for that? 250? Oh, no, nah, give me the five. I'll pay you the 250. I'll keep the other 250. Win-win situation. But, you know, but in the context of it, yeah, I'm yeah, 100% yeah. taking the meeting, bro, just because the amount of doors that will open, bro. It's like, you, there will be no one in that situation you couldn't, like, touch, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Or, or get to. And, I mean, like, uh, Rashad had mentioned in the clip, the the value of your network could easily 10, 20, 100x, like, what you would have initially got. Like, I'm sure, bro, they probably made... I don't know, a lot more than 500K. A lot you know what I'm saying? A lot more than 500K more. just from having access to that, to that network. And I think, like, well, if he didn't, he wouldn't be telling that story. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 100%. But I, I think it's one of those things where it, it comes down to confidence in yourself as a business owner, right? Like, do you feel more confident in flipping a network or do you feel more confident in flipping money? I know people who feel way more confident in flipping a network than flipping money, right? Like, now, give me access to people and I'll let these people figure out how to do X, Y, Z and I'll make money off of that, right? Yep. Versus you have some people who are the opposite. Now, give me the money. I don't, I don't want to figure people out and how to use them and things like that. But you always want to hit that people ceiling eventually. Yeah, eventually, yeah. At 100%. some point, yeah. you can't do the money thing without people because it 
it gets trapped the money gets trapped behind boards of directors yeah. or i'm so big that i gotta deal with government and lobbying you know what i mean yeah. right or partnerships and there's all these other aspects where once you hit a certain level of money and that's you know it's considerably high up especially depending on the industry and all that stuff like it's it's a real thing but the thing is what are we here for we're here for talking music yeah bro that's a low ass ceiling yeah very low. you gotta talk to <laughs> you talk about making 10 bands you gotta talk to folks <laughs> right like deal with folks you gotta go to the club if you're an artist right deal with the people at the club the the uh the promoter or whoever and maintain that relationship with that promoter because yeah. it can come back to you you build over time and music this is relevant like asap so then you talk about meeting jay-z and you're in music and you have that relationship and everything that cascades from that in terms of resources and opening doors and oh yeah oh he, you know jay-z and he's cool with you da, da, da. that might also create some enemies depending on like who might not like him but that's part of the game anyway yeah, okay. right yeah. so like in music this is especially relevant to have this mentality because it's so few places that you can just throw that 500k out in and get it out immediately without unless you don't have a real infrastructure already and if you don't have the relationships you're also going to be kind of blocked out from most of the opportunities yeah so you know i, I hope artists y'all understand this because we actually also are going to we're going the next subject is actually this but 10 times <laughs> deeper <laughs> right but you gotta know in the music industry, this game is about finesse. Yep. This game is about putting in work. And you have to be able to see the opportunity beyond the opportunity. Just point blank. Yeah. And where most people mess up in the music industry is not seeing the opportunity beyond the opportunity. So we're going to talk about that. Because this came to head recently with a very, very interesting circumstance. Glorilla the budding artist made a post talking about a job opportunity that she had and it ruined her and her friend's relationship. So let me go ahead and play this clip. We're going to talk about it because it's some real conversation that needs to be had when it comes to this music shit. All right, let's go. Let's go. I'm just talking about five people too. Like, you really need to be five. You're on point with them today. No, I'm just playing, but for real. <laughs> First of all, your flights get paid for. Your flights in your travel. Hold on, let me read this because she you didn't play the beginning. Glorilla responds to backlash after she posted a personal assistant job for five hundred and fifty dollars a week. So that's the context. They talking about five fifty too low. You really need to be five hundred. Now I'm just playing, but for real. First of all, your flights get paid for. Your flights in your travel. If you want to have pay, then pay for your own flights and on your own travel and see how much them $500 flight tickets. Bitch, you think I'm going to pay you $1,200 a week and pay? I, I take flights every day. You think I'm going to pay $500 for you a flight every day plus pay? No, they don't work like that. Anyways, um, after that, how? I think the, the point is understood. We're not going to have to, we don't need to play that whole clip. The whole point is, one, she's not just paying five fifty every single week. She's also paying for all these other things mm -hmm. that come along with the job, right? Yeah. She's taking you around with her. It's going to cost you for a flight. It's going to cost you for multiple things. And I want to post the uh, the Nick Love tweet because we can really get into it. But some people might just have an attitude like, hey, well, that's the cost of doing business, right? Yeah. Hey, you... Go to a certain jobs, they pay for the laptop, they pay for the phone, all right? They're paying the light bills for the facility. So that's just a part of the job. Why do I have to take a hit for the fact that you got to pay these other expenses? Yeah. First answer is you do take a hit, right? Anybody out there, if y'all have a regular employed job on paper, that means your job's paying health insurance. If you were a contractor, you would get paid more money. Mm -hmm. You get paid less because they don't have because you're they're paying for your health insurance, right? Mm -hmm. I know some jobs. Sixty thousand is if you're if you work there, 
The contractor's getting paid 80000 all right? It's just what you want to do, all right? So it looks better, but now you got to take these other things into account. So the reality is everybody's getting paid less if they work a regular job based on the expenses. The employer always has to consider all their expenses. But getting into the real, y'all need a rude awakening, some of y'all, when it comes to, again, how this music stuff works, how y'all need to flip opportunities. But let's get into Nick Love's tweet because the conversations around it. Whew, it's interesting. So Nick Love, re- referencing this, said nobody wants to intern to be in the music business anymore. Okay, I can ride with that. But 500 plus a week isn't enough either? What's the right answer? How much should someone be paid for entry-level work in 2023? Now, when he says nobody wants to intern, he's talking about nobody wants to do free. Because yeah. music per- industry per- uh, perception is nobody want to work for free anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but five hundred w- a week ain't enough. Now I'm not gonna lie, I never did the work for free thing. Personally, mm. I never was gonna do it. I was always entrepreneurial, <laughs> so I was always gonna make some money. I did, and the things that I did do work for free, quote unquote. I didn't look at that because I always was working, making money. And it's like, I'm just kind of like building something over here, building a relationship over there. So that might have been looked at that, but it was never like a main thing or a, a through line career path. So, you know, Ja'Cory, give him give him a little bit of your life, though. Your life is different than mine. Yeah, bro. I don't work, <laughs> I don't work a couple of free joints. But first off, I managed for a couple of years. That's basically an internship until that motherfucker started making money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Which I, I actually had another tweet. I should have dropped it in the chat. But there was a tweet where uh, somebody was like... <laughs> Oh, like something people don't want to enter and wait till people find out that there's a job in the music industry where you might not get paid for years. You know what I'm saying? Like alluding to the manager shit. So I did that. But like my very first uh, industry experience was I was a social media intern for a side of the prince. Like I helped write tweets and things for that. That was free. No money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got like a pizza party. You know what I'm saying? To start off. <laughs> that was pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? But no money hit my pockets. But my, my very first real industry job I think I've told the story a couple of times, but there was a point where like, I got interned for, for a publicist and he ended up somehow becoming friends with this very, very rich guy. Like the one of the first like millionaires I ever met in my life. Um, I always remember this. And he just pitched me and he's like, yo, we want you to come out here to North Carolina and help us with this project. It's going to be like two weeks, right? We're not going to pay you, but it'll be fun. And like, I'm young, I'm hungry. So I'm like, fuck it. Like, let me go a uh, free. I'm like, can y'all just pay for my travel and make sure I eat? I'm there like, yeah, we got you. You know what I'm saying? Just come. So I'm there for the two weeks. And I always remember there was a point where they were like, man, you're great. Like, how can we get you to stay? And I was like, pay me. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like, they said, I'm like, that's literally it, bro. Pay me so I don't have to go back home, back to my job. Because I like lied to my job like crazy to get out. I don't even know what to lie to her, but I just know it was some shit I was proud of 19-year-old me coming up with. Like, oh, that shit sound beautiful. But it wasn't a lot. Like, I think I was making... A thousand dollars a month, and this is 2014. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't know what it's equivalent to today. It's still not a lot of money, right? Yeah. But they were also paying for my apartment. Um, that rent for that was maybe like seven to nine hundred a month, and they had got me a rental car, which I'm assuming the payments probably between two to five hundred a month. Did you have your own individual apartment, or were you living with somebody? No, nah, I'm on apartment. Because at first I was staying in a hotel. They was they put me up in a hotel every night, gotcha. and one of the people we were working with was staying in the house, but then he wanted the hotel room. And I was like, bro, you tripping. This, this shit, this house nice as fuck. I'm taking the house. <laughs> so then we switched. She got my hotel room. I got the house. That Because they, they had bought the house for the artists that we were working with. Oh, okay. but Like I said, gotcha. the artist didn't want to say he wanted to get the hotel. I'm like, no, this apartment, nice, bro. I'm taking the apartment. So they're paying for the apartment. They're paying for the rental car. I had a gas card, so I didn't have to pay for my own gas. And they would reimburse us for meals. Like if it was a meal I was eating like when I was off the clock, I'm on my own, but if it was a meal I was eating between the hours, supposed to be doing shit, like, they took care of me. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, on one hand, because I always remember talking to my mom about this, and she was like, they only pay you $1,000 a month. I'm like, yeah, but if you include everything else, it's really a, about 2800 to maybe 3500 yeah. a month. You know what I'm saying? If I was paying for all that shit by myself, ain't no way. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, but even outside of that, because you said something re- uh, earlier that, I think was at least one of the reasons I took it was I was very entrepreneurial. So I'm like, this isn't a lot of money, 
But that time, like, I had, like, a blog I was building up. You know what I'm saying? So I was making a little money off of that. Yep, I was sure. doing, like, video editing on the side. So I had, like, like you know, you, you started to plan your day out. Yo, they got me working from 8 a.m. to, like, 9 at night. That means I got 10 to 1 to make some, some other money real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, or do X, Y, Z. And I do think that a, a large part of the reason that the music industry moves the way it kind of moves in this is that we naturally assume that everyone in the music industry is entrepreneurial. Yeah, right. it, it breathes entrepreneurs because yeah. almost like the barrier of entry is if you aren't the type of person who's going to figure out how to make money yeah. in some form or fashion. But we don't want you. We don't want you yeah. in, in, in most cases. Now, of course, there's companies, you know, you get to a certain point, you have at least your core team. But outside of that core team and the people who matter most, we can only do so much for you. Yeah, exactly, bro. It's like you're not working for like a big label or, you know, an established publishing company or something. The rest of the music industry is is, is like a, they're small businesses, right? And like, and at at least most of the small businesses I've I've seen, like a lot of the employees tend to be entrepreneurial. And then plus it's music, bro. There's no employee we've ever had. There's no one I've ever seen work a job that I don't automatically assume isn't doing something else to make money on the side. Even if we were like paying them great, like you know, it's like I'd be paying you ten k a month, but if you want fifteen, you're gonna go figure out another way to keep making some money. And I can't do anything about that. But then even as a business owner, like, I'm kind of glad that you like that, right? I'm like, I'm glad that you are always thinking that because you're going to ideally transfer that same attitude to, like, the shit I hired you for. You know what I'm saying? The thing that I put you in. So I think that sometimes there's the disconnect because I come into it assuming, like, let's say in this situation, like, Glow really is probably thinking, like, yo, I'm going to put you around all these people in these situations. Like, you're probably going to flip it into your own shit, Mm -hmm. which if she's right and you do, then that experience is worth more than whatever the money is that she paid you. And then if you don't, or you don't plan to do something like for you, your ceiling is just that position, then yeah, they're right. Like there's not enough, you know what I'm saying? But as an employer, she's probably considering like everything, right? Like like she said, travel, I'm flying every day. It's at least probably like fifteen hundred to five K a month, you know what I'm saying? Right yep. there. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe a week shit. You know what I'm saying? She really flying every day, you know what I'm saying? Plus hotels, because she probably don't want her staying at her hotel room, right? So now I gotta put you up. They probably reimburse. Usually like interns and assistants, like they'll pay for your food and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Um, but then the opportunity flip, you know, going back to the Earn Your Leisure clip, she's probably thinking like, bro, you're going to be, a, if, if you were producer and interning from Glow, really like think about all the artists you meet and all the, the placements you might get, right? Yep. If you, if I was a marketer, you know what I'm saying, interning for Glow, really like thinking about all the campaigns out like, because I'd 100% be doing something on the side. So I think most people in music assume that the people that you hire underneath you are going to have other things that they're doing to make money. Because I, I haven't met anybody yet in music that's really just doing like their one job. You know what I'm saying? Well, I won't say anybody, but it's been a very small amount of people. Like I could probably count them yeah. on like both hands. You know what I'm saying? If I thought about it. I'll say this, man. Like it's it goes back to that same, would you do 500K or would you have mm-hmm. a meeting with Jay-Z? Most of the opportunity in these space and places are meeting people. Yeah. All right. Meeting people. So you're talking about one of the hottest game artists in the game right now on the hip hop side, Glorilla. She's really piping hot at the moment. She's about to meet a whole lot of people. Mm-hmm. Period. That's a whole lot of relationships that you can make. We know one of Diddy's personal assistants. Oh yeah. Right. And he has this entire plan, right? After this, because I'm getting all these connections, the people I'm on the phone with, like you can insert all the big names you you could think of that Diddy would talk to. Literally, he's talking to them sometimes. And mm-hmm. what I can do with my brand name that I established with them, because trust is the biggest currency once everybody has the money. Yeah. Right now, after this, I can leave and then go flip it and build something big. If y'all know what the crew league is. Where you see all these rappers, artists yeah, yeah. playing ball or whatever, that was started by one of Diddy's ex personal assistants. He got all those relationships with the Chris Browns and all these other folks, built his name. And this is information we got from him because he was Diddy's personal assistant, probably not making the most money in the world, but also, you know, I'm sure they got a little bit, but like, you're not making anywhere near the most, but you got Diddy's name on your resume. You build a relationship with Diddy where he'll be willing to open some doors. Probably, you know, as long as you aren't, aren't like probably violating, hitting them every single day, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. the obvious type of stuff. Yeah. And then everybody around that you're coming across that you don't even know how to get in contact to. You don't know how to get in those doors. It would take you, I don't even know how long, right? <laughs> know how long. Think about just the uh, the stuff that happened when we were like traveling with Macy those times. 
Yeah, that was crazy. Just like random. Yeah. Like, you never know, right? In the moment type stuff. So, like, bro, that shit is so valuable. I encourage anybody, if they see a job like that for an artist like that, y'all y'all take that. Easy, Like, bro. easy. If you're young, because I was doing $1,000 a month jobs. Fifteen hundred dollar a month jobs. Even when we were starting our business, we weren't paying ourselves like one thousand, yeah. fifteen hundred for the longest, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, uh, you got it, especially if you're like in her hometown, wherever she's mainly based. So I guess I'm gonna assume Memphis or whatever, right? But somewhere where it's like you could just live in Mama's house when you at home, you got to take that job. I will take that. You have to take that job. Part of the interruption, I have to take this quick commercial break to let you know that we are sponsored by. Me, because I signed myself. We signed ourselves. This is Brand Man Network. That's why we're called No Labels Necessary, because no label, nobody else is necessary for us to get the train moving. So if you could just subscribe to show appreciation, we'd really appreciate that. Back to the program. Easy, bro. Like you said, bro, if you, not even young, bro, I feel like if you don't have any kids and like serious bills, bro, like, yes, 100%, bro. Because like, yes, so, so I, I would do that shit now, you know what I'm saying? Like, to be real with you, like I said, I'm, I'm thinking about yes. the flip, bro. If I was around her, yes, but we're making a we're making at least 200k a month in campaigns, bro, because I'm trying to sell everybody I come across, you know, bro. like, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm lining it up. So, and that's the that's the biggest thing, too, because even going back to the intern conversation that, that Nick brought up, bro, like, you listen to the stories of motherfuckers interning in the music industry in, like, the 70s, 80s, 90s, bro, that shit was real, like, abuse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so we've come a long way, I think, yeah. as an industry that was, like, we at least are willing to pay people at that spot, but it's, like, you were essentially getting paid to learn about something you don't understand. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that like you're essentially getting paid. It's like being paid to go to school, you know? Yep. Um, and in her case, you're getting paid to increase your network, bro. Because if you're her assistant, it means everybody that she comes in contact is going to have to talk to you at one way or another. So you literally meet every single person that she meets. Or like, let's say like 90 to 95% of the people that she meets in business dealings are going to have to deal with you in one way or another. Yep. If even... 3% of those people actually converted over to your network. That would be crazy. You know what I'm saying? You know what, though? Most jobs, so there's two things working against people. One, if most people go to college. Mm. Now you're thinking about these student loans I got to pay off, yeah, right? Yeah. Music, you don't need to go to college. Yeah. You don't need it in this industry. But, of course, you know, it might help for those of y'all who are out there or whatever. Then the other thing is most jobs actually do not give you an environment where you are meeting people like that. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, I'm going to give you this 60K because all you can expect is this 60K and to go home. Yeah, you're not getting right? nothing else. You yeah. come to the office, you're in a cubicle, you might talk to the people on a group call, and you might have a way of going up the ladder in this company, but it doesn't create additional opportunity for you outside of this company where music kind of is this constantly moving thing and and the people within music move around so much yeah. that they don't necessarily expect you to be stagnant, especially if the company isn't like a, more of a startup and it's growing. You know yeah. what I mean? Startups and growing, you have a more strong core team that you're looking for and you're trying to build something. It's a, it's a different type of vision. But it's like at the labels. I was just on a call with someone the other day, yesterday actually, over at one of the bigger labels. And... He was like, yeah, man, I'm, I don't plan to be here next year. He just got here this year. Don't plan to be here next year. And he was like, yeah, because all the label, all the money is outside the labels. I'm here to learn. And yeah. actually, he's probably, I didn't ask him what he was making, but he's probably getting paid over 100K. Yeah. But this is just a natural mindset of music, though, right? If I'm not attached to an artist or I'm not building something my own, there's a ceiling. So it's 100K, 150K. Whatever, I'm not gonna go too much higher than that here. I'm trying here to learn the system, get out of it, apply it to my own artist label infrastructure, and blow things up here. And again, this is a great job making money that probably most people would love to make in any other industry. But music is like, all right, now I gotta get to my own. Yeah. So I think that setup is it attracts the people who think like that, and all the commentary are for people who aren't going to win in music anyway because if you don't think like that or understand enough to know that there's opportunity maybe i'll get a raise with this person maybe glorilla gets even bigger and she needs 
assistance under assistance, like the mm-hmm. Diddy situation, like Diddy got assistance and managing assistance. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's either growth here or there's an opportunity that come from it. So, you know, music is a really weird space. So I, w- I want to read some of these comments because maybe some of these people, we, we probably should look at it, <laughs> try to get a gist of some of these people are in the music industry or not. Because I can understand if you're not in the music industry, why you think all this shit is just crazy. But um, let's say Jabari McDonald said, Someone managing your calendar and schedule, having the names and numbers of all personal and business contacts, traveling with you, knowing where you live, coordinating your safety protocols, and you call it entry level? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. You also have that exact same person, and it could be upper level, but Glorilla is a new artist, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. People are probably pocket watching. She don't have the money y'all think she has yet. She literally just started popping. Yeah, she right. ain't seen that money yet. Yeah. Right? Two, like, she probably hasn't had a personal assistant before, so you have to be entry level because there's nothing like everything yeah. is developing now. The infrastructure is developing now, so there's no high level skill sets that are acquired just yet, right? Like she's learning this shit on the go. Yeah, she's new, bro. If it was like Drake or something, this would be a different story. Yeah, like, if it was exactly. Drake putting that up, bro. I'd be like, come on, bro. N- no like, way. Yeah. No yeah. way. <laughs> like Drake, personal assistant, right? Easily over 100k. Yeah. Right. Easy. Easily. Easy. All right. Let me see. Five hundred dollars. That's minimum wage in Jersey. For an industry that I would hold my value higher in than a cashier at McDonald's, even as a newcomer. Hmm. I mean, it's about the same, bro. Personal assistant for a new rapper, cashier at McDonald's. About the same. Yeah. Never, you know. Yeah. I mean, you got to look at the business that you're attached to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Like, that is a ca- billion that, dollars. It is a cashier for the music industry. That's... that's <laughs> Maybe not. The mailroom. Not gonna, the mailroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go with the cashier in the music industry. Uh, I, well, a new, new personal assistant. Okay. Like the cashier. A uh, brand new. Okay, yeah, I can brand see new, that. Bro, I can yeah. see that. The season, All like, right. good ones, bro? No, yeah, 100% not. Yeah, let, let's get through a couple more of these. Like, this... These people be living outside their means. If you stay within your means and not try to live a life that you see on social media, two bands a month is more than enough for you to save and stack while you make your next move. This is my thing. There's a lot of people out there who are not making two bands or are just making two bands. Yeah. Including, yes, let's say people who are working at McDonald's, people who are working in some of these grocery stores, right? Yeah. But they don't have the opportunity this shit has. Exactly, bro. They're not introducing you to the people that this does. By the way, y'all should know, most of these jobs are not something that people expect you to be in forever. Yeah. Like, this is not only an entry-level job, it's a temporary job that's supposed to be a stepping stone. I don't plan to pay you 2 k for the rest of your life a month or $500 a, a, a week or the rest of the, your life because that's a little bit more viral statement, right? <laughs> $500 a week for the rest of your life. I plan on you to graduate. Maybe you make a little bit more, but you're probably going to graduate and then I'm going to pay somebody else $500 a week. Yeah. And then they're going to keep learning that in the system. People build that into their business models where they know because of the infrastructure and their needs, there's not that much more opportunity in this space. So I just want Someone who can do it while they're there because it doesn't require that high, a long of a skill set, that high of a skill set. So I can train you quickly. Yeah. They move on. Then I add somebody else in and it just keeps cycling in and cycling out. And then maybe there's one person who's staying and managing that. That's a legitimate business model. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, We're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Sometimes you just got to see a model for what it is. But like not seeing the opportunity here. Like it's funny you said that though. Like you like you would do that shit right now. 
I felt the same way yeah, outside bro. of like my circumstances. You know what I mean? Like yeah. obviously we got a business going and, and then I got the wife and kids situation. But like as a single person, especially if I wasn't popping, popping and I knew I, I was in music. Probably lit. Probably why? Lit. Why would I not? <laughs> Well, nah, man. Yeah, I would flip that, but maybe you have to kind of be in it long enough to see and know what, exactly what to do with it. And I think that goes back to the five hundred k or a meeting. Yeah, when you know what to do with a meeting, then bam, that confidence checks in. I'm gonna take the meeting because then you mentioned confidence earlier. Yeah, a lot of your decision making when it comes to being a business person and not playing yourself or just making better decisions. One is long term thinking, but two is the confidence to be able to cap off of something. Yeah. Like sometimes people just do some stuff because it's like, oh, I might intellectually understand it, but I'm not confident in myself to figure that shit yeah, out. I don't think I'm gonna be here to really I, it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I might not be here tomorrow. So let's enjoy the day. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. that's the mentality. Yeah. And I, I do think sometimes too, like like general employers sometimes don't respect the uh the personal development aspect of some of the stuff because I, I i think about yes. like our stuff and it's like we probably spent at this point in time i would guess what we probably spent at least like 70k maybe 200 kind of like courses and stuff yes and i think about that bro everybody that works for us can go through a hundred thousand dollars worth of information for free because we give everything that me and you've ever went to to all of our employees like they have the option to at least go through it right yeah if jocelyn today wanted to go learn how to grow an agency she could take the same agency building resources i, I took right and, and do something with it and like that in itself is i think very valuable you know because i think like the, the bigger entities are gonna ideally give you that i actually saw um bmg was hiring for like a digital marketing manager or something that's one of their selling points you get access to this i can't even think is it lydia or something like the the course oh yeah linda linda there we go right like that one of their big selling points is like we give you access to linda they're basically like yeah, we're gonna give you like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of educational resources. Like, yo, going back to what you're saying, like, yo, we don't expect you to be in this shit forever. If you do, then we think you fucking up. Because mm-hmm. that means you're not, either you're not growing enough to, uh, you know, where we can push you to something higher or like your, your, the spirit just ain't there to where like, you're going to work your way out of this shit anyway. So that like, most people in those jobs, like the job ends up firing them anyway. You know what I'm yep. saying? Um, because it's like, I don't, I don't think most employers go into it saying like, how hey, I want to pay you a low amount forever. It's like, you know. Something is gravely wrong if it's that. They do, yeah. Like, like, it means the business isn't growing and doing what it's supposed to or you're not doing what you're supposed to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, going back to even what you said, like, Glow Real is the equivalent to, like, a, a new startup right now. Yep. Right? Hot in the marketplace that so we talking about her. But she ain't she ain't legacy yet, right? The the, the revenue ain't ain't stable as stable as, as it, as it mm-hmm. could be or is it? So, it's like, this is the equivalent of, like, a you know, like a new app launching or some shit and then they, they hiring you for an entry level there right do you have enough faith in the company that you're going to work for that they're going to be here long enough that you can make more money yes and if you do think there will be then that's me is even more of a reason to take it because you get to get in early on something like that right and now like imagine being like an entry level employee for like youtube or something when they first started and then you still be that a day but you'd be crazy you know what i'm saying you're yep. making so much money you know so many people you have such a crazy brand to flip and I, i'm looking at the same thing with that I was like yo if you are someone that believes that like glorilla might even be here and let's not even say a long time let's say for at least the next three to five years that's good enough in music bro you make it for at least three to five mm-hmm. years you, you you solid you know what i'm saying and the advancements you're gonna get in that time because ideally her business stabilizes and i mean she seems like she wants to do things right right like, like man, you said it again bro like she's a new business owner like she probably She's probably just just now starting to even think that she needs to figure this stuff out. But it's like if mm-hmm. she grows, she's gonna want to grow you with her. But personal assistants be some of the closest people to artists. You know what I'm saying? They be damn near like their thumb or some shit, bro. Like right there mm-hmm. with them. You know, yeah. so damn near probably end up becoming BFFs. You know what I'm saying? Like brother and sister, 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 whoever you are. And like you just get the benefit completely off of the rise of that because like you're right there with all of it. You know, just like employees that work for startups that end up blowing up and becoming the next best thing. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, some of those players be people in some of the best positions. You know what I'm saying? Because like they, yep. they were just right there with it all. And and I feel like a good business owner that sees the company go through that is going to want to pay you more. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm saying. I don't. It, it's a very special type of business owner that's like, no, nah, I'm trying to pay these niggas less. You know what I'm saying? Most of the <laughs> most of the ones like I've I've known, even especially in music, are all trying to figure out how to pay everybody that works for them more. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like it's like, yo, man, this person, uh, they're happy with this, but I really wanted to make at least double. That should be making double that for the job and how much I think they do for me. 
but this is all I can afford right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is all I can do. We only maybe maybe only doing 500k a year, so I can't give you 200k a year. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. I can give you 40k a year, but if you grow with me over these next three years, and yeah, three years, I should be able to pay you 200k a year easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, based on the way this is going. So, it goes back to that confidence thing, bro. Like, not even just the confidence in you being able to flip it and and get outside value out of it, but, like, confidence in the person that, that you're working for. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you do you think that business is going somewhere or that artist that you're working for is going somewhere? Because the answer mm-hmm. is no. And I completely feel everybody that says not enough. But if you <laughs> if you say yes and you like, man, I could see Glorilla becoming the next Cardi B, then it's like, well, would you not – you don't think in five years from now you you would want to be attached to that person? You know what I'm saying? Like in, in some way, shape, or form? Crazy. Bruh. Cap. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh, well said. And I want to cap it with a couple more comments because they they got real interesting. This one right here is- Oh, yeah. I saw that one. This is why record labels have no future. Gen Z kids' political awareness is going to radically change media consumption. Also, Web3 is here. Y'all just used to exploiting- Y'all normalize it, generations of creative squeeze till their breaking point. These are the statements of someone who doesn't run a business, period, like or doesn't run a business well. Because, like you said, there's one. It's a difference between a bad business owner or like someone with bad intentions doesn't want their people to win, mm. and then most people which in some way you want to be able to pay your people more, mm. find the most quality people and, and grow with those people. That's just most cases. And and I, I will argue with that, bro. Gen Z kids are some of the most entrepreneurial kids I've ever seen in my life. They are. They would 100% be like, oh, no, I'm flipping this shit. <laughs> many, many of them many will. Many of them, yeah. Many yeah. of them will. Like the, the person I was just talking to who's working at the label. Yeah. He's Gen Z, actually. Oh, young, sure. Yes, young yeah. as hell. Yeah. Flipped opportunities. Yeah, you know what I mean. Flipped opportunities. G- doing just that. Matter of fact, did he say he was making around two K? I feel like he might have, but I don't. I don't. But yes. So, bruh, I don't, I don't even want to get into the Gen Z argument. Uh, man, y'all acting like people can can live off that. All they asking is that a millionaire pays them. Stop calling Gorilla a millionaire, bruh. She just popped. It's probably been six months, maybe. Maybe, yeah, Max. How often do checks come in music off the mute? Like every quarter. Damn every man. quarter. <laughs> so we're just now getting to the second quarter. Yeah. Yeah, she's toured or whatever. And the I got some advances. Yeah, so, some, of course, the advances. Mm. But advance doesn't make you a millionaire. Yeah. Right? A millionaire is a stable position. If you want to label somebody a millionaire, not somebody who has a million dollars, a millionaire, that's a stable position. I've seen money through probably at least a couple seasons. Yeah. Right? A couple seasons. And when I say couple seasons, I'm like a couple years. Right? Yeah. Like, so, and this is stagnant and not, not stagnant. It's stable and I can continue to grow from there. She is not a millionaire, bro. Like, it's way too early to go from where she would uh came from and to say she's a millionaire from a standpoint, I treat you like a millionaire and judge you. Amon Shumpert was talking about, he's an NBA player. He was talking about, you know, these players who might be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm making $15 million or whatever and, and feel like that they're on the same level as him. But he's a veteran now. He's like, I've been making that money for 10 years. Yeah. It's just different. You're a rookie, and it's nice. Of course, congratulations, but I've had time to mess up, to put money away again and again and again. It You can make 100 mil, right? And that's not the same as making 15 over 10 years. Yeah. Yes, technically it's less, but it's also just the habits and the lifestyle and the stability that comes with it while you're still in the phase of figuring out where do I put this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, stop stop doing this with artists. And this is becoming a, a industry navigation episode <laughs> <laughs> and how you think episode, but it's very, very real for anybody who wants to get a job. And a lot of your artists, you know, you know, we know a lot of artists who have gotten different jobs and then flipped it into their artistry or or you know, to at least work in an industry that they want to be in until they pop off as an artistry. So it's invaluable nonetheless. Let's let's get a couple other tweets. What's y'all issue with everyone deserving to be paid a livable wage? Why is that so hard to understand? So quick math, 550, you know, just round it up. Well, down, say it's 2K a month, 24K a year. I get it. 24K a year is not a lot of money. 
per se, like when you look at the full scope of things. But when you're talking about being early on, I have lived off of less than 24K. <laughs> and somehow there were people who I knew who were making more money than me and living off of 24 and 30 and 40 and slowly doing that over the years. I had a similar financial position because I wasn't living over above my means. Yeah. They're out there doing whatever they do. You know what I mean? And I'm just working. You know, that little bit of money, I, I stay out of credit card debt. Like I was like on that type of time. So everybody assuming that livable ways, you can live. I'm not saying you can live good. I'm not encouraging that. I'm not saying that you, we want anybody there permanently. Everybody, please yeah, get yeah. that. Sister, but, I ain't going to be balling for sure. But look, I've done been there. I've done that. And if you're working, if you're living with a parent, especially, hey. So also, look, bro, that just might mean this job ain't for you. Don't get mad if, if the shit ain't for you. That's like me looking at a job listing in LA and being like, man, why that shit have to be in LA? Yeah. Or why that, like, you're not forcing me. I'm not in the job. I'm not working for you. And then all of a sudden you come in, hey, Sean, you know what? You making 10K a month, but we're going to drop this shit to 2K a month. No, you chose this. Yeah. So if it, you're just not the person for the job. Yeah. What's the uproar? <laughs> and she, she probably is looking for somebody that's like young, hungry. I see one of the comments is about what if they have experience, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, one, I feel like they would have truly meet a personal assistant that was just like really on their shit, had years of experience. They would probably be willing to have the conversation of paying them off. Have the conversation. Yeah, exactly. But- might not be able to pay you what you think you're worth because yeah. of this is just what my budget is That's right my now. Situation. Now, do you want to see the vision and you go ahead and you know take less than you feel like your experience should get you and then grow with me and go that way? Yeah. Cool, right? That's like you said, belief in yourself and belief in the person um, who's running the company. Or do you want to just say, all right, cool, I understand, and then not take the job? But you have the option to not take this job. So let's see. I'm just run through like three, and then we'll do a last wrap up for this comment because we ended up on this longer than I thought. But again, I ask, who said it's entry level? What if one has expertise or experience already in that field? That's that person you talked about. Look, it doesn't. <laughs> you you creating hypotheticals. You think you should be getting five hundred dollars a week for entry level work? First of all, that's subjective. Entry level. Yes, in certain industries, you know, because some industries, entry level is uh, like 100K damn near. Mm. Like some of these programming jobs that I had and I was looking at when I was on that side of things and I was programming and stuff, they were starting at 80K out of college. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> and, and I know some dudes who had, uh, made more than that. So entry level is relative. After watching that video she posted, I really just think Shawty did a horrible job of explaining the logistic behind the job requirements, etc. But then again, I think that job is for somebody that has potential wanting to gain experience from scratch. Yes. Well said, man. I, I do think she probably could have done it better. You know, a little mm. rough around the edges. But at the same time, look, if I'm somebody without a skill, your, your value is judged on a skill. If I'm somebody without a skill, I'm going to definitely take this job even more so because this yeah. gives me the ability to gain a skill and actually be able to demand more from anywhere else. Bro, and, and you know, as, as motherfuckers that's posted job listens before, bro, you know, sometimes you just got to be snatching shit off Upwork to make it look more serious than what it really is. Mm -hmm. And that's not really what you're asking for. Because in that video, she explained like what she really wants the assistant to do. You know what I'm saying? Like what you would really be doing that job. And mm -hmm. you compare it to what she put on the post. Yeah, the post does look crazy. I ain't gonna lie. But then she's like, no, no, no. Okay, I can see I kind of went overboard. You know what I'm saying? But she probably, they probably got that shit off, off of Upwork. <laughs> post, bro, just copy and paste that shit. Man. And threw it on there. So, yeah. Look, look I, I'm gonna read I'm these, these last two. She didn't say it was an internship. She said it was a job and kids are making banking internships now. I got paid more than that at a nonprofit internship in 2011. I love Globe, but the pay is a no. I am 25 and was making 37K and still couldn't pay my bills sufficiently. I am now making 52K and pay and can pay them, but still cannot purchase much entertainment. Ain't nobody feeling empathy for that. I'm not <laughs> understanding what y'all are missing about the dollar doesn't stretch as far as it used to, especially if you're single. I don't know where you live, but bro, like you making 
like 52k and can barely pay for your own entertainment i was having a I was. I've never not been having fun when I had bro, the opportunity. Bro, stack up five hundred, get you a PS five. <laughs> stack up another one eighty, get you a couple games, and you stay your ass in the house and, and you know, what I'm saying, play Fortnite online or some shit, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get your Netflix subscription. Now again, one hundred percent. We know that inflation. We get all yeah. these things, so some numbers might be a little bit skewed from what we were used to uh, when when we were getting. You know, a thousand a month, fifteen hundred a month. It might be slightly different. Cool, I understand that. So two thousand today might feel a little bit different, whatever. But please understand that this, when you're looking at jobs in the music industry, don't let people trick you off your block. Yeah, like people don't understand this industry, and that's cool. It's no difference than you know my mom. Not understanding entrepreneurship and how much I'm paying myself at the moment. How come you're not paying yourself more? How come you paying other people more than you? How right. come like that? It's like, hey, look, <laughs> chill out. I know you don't get it, <laughs> but we gotta <laughs> we gotta build, All right? Like that's the moment of time it is. So people might not get it. Don't get your context and advice from outside that industry. In most cases, because um, they just, particularly when it's something like music, like they just don't get it, and. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not for you, that's one hundred percent understandable. Understandable. The game ain't for everybody. Hey, <laughs> hey, like I, I ain't gonna say I just hopped in and like, oh, this is a beautiful place. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I wasn't like that at all. I was like, eh, do I want to be here? If I, if I am here, how do I want to go about it? Yeah. That was my, my way that I came, came into it. So make that decision for yourself. Yeah, man. So I, I wonder if her assistant, the one sending her nigga the five attachments. You know what I'm saying that's pretty. That's part of jobs because I don't know if you get that. I feel like you, I feel like that went over your head. Wait, you said send her five attachments. I one of her assistant is the one sending her nigga the five attachments. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it did go over my head first. I ain't quite on here. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Light work, That's bro. Funny. You, you you three for three with the verse. Bro, I've been on it, bro. Today. Bro, I've been on it, bro. You, you on it, man. I don't know where it's coming. You from, had your but... tea this morning or something, you know? <laughs> nah, man. I had a uh... actually I did. Really? I've been on the matcha wave recently, man. I forgot to tell you that. I, I told yeah. you, bro. Yeah, Once been... you figure it out, yeah, it's a different little space, man. It's... Yeah, bro. It's like three minutes on the Keurig, forty five seconds on the matcha, bro. Easy, easy, hey. easy hey. flip. Hey man, shout out, shout out to Lee man for putting us into the the match. I know you out in Malaysia, so you probably are not hearing this or listening <laughs> to this. But shout out to you anyway. Um, and y'all, look, y'all try matcha. We might have to, we might have a, a matcha sponsor. Yeah, bro? we be, might I have a matcha sponsorship, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Put, I, I, I definitely put the world on they that. Can pay us some product too. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is kind of expensive. <laughs> All right, so the next next story. These other ones are gonna be a little bit quicker, um, but I feel like for a full video, when we clip that other one up, we needed to be as long as it was. Now, they paid her so much, she took her glasses off. <laughs> what is this about? This is about her, her the artist. Now, this is a joke. This is a meme. <laughs> The artist, her. If y'all don't know who she is, uh, well, look, she's R and B singer. Y'all should get. Y'all gotta know who she is. Look her up if you don't. But she played Belle in ABC's Beauty and the Beast special. Oh shit, for real? Yeah, she I did. did not know that. It was a live special, and she was on TV yeah, playing Belle. Right? Oh, shit, goddamn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Level up these these uh, women artists, especially in the R and B space. I've been seeing a lot of them make these type of crossovers, and they're they're killing that. I would like to see more. Of some of like the male rappers and artists like do those type of crossovers these days. I'm not getting enough of it. Like, why? But why is this a story? Like, see the baby play like Scar and the Lion King or something. <sighs> Stop it, man! Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> you, you... <laughs> <laughs> why is this a story though? Why is this a story? That's the whole point of bringing this up. They paid her so much she took her glasses off. Her glasses are only a big deal because they're a part of her brand. Yeah. Yeah. How did they become a part of her brand? She wore them again and again and again. Yeah. The same thing we talked about the other day. Something can be extremely simple and basic, but if you do it over and over again, you can turn it into a brand and you can make it more extraordinary than it actually is. And sometimes people overthink what an actual brand is. They think that, oh, I need to do some type of massive gimmick. I need to uh, figure out how to be bright and stand out in all these other ways, but literally just doing something re repeatedly 
can be good enough. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It can be good enough. So that's the main highlight that I got from this headline. Of course, you know, the shit's funny, actually. But the fact that it was something worth mentioning only comes from how well established her brand is. Is this the first time we've seen her without her glasses on? It's not. It's not? Okay. It's not. Okay. okay. Not at all. This is my first time seeing her without her glasses on. No, nah, man. Now <laughs> she... See? There it is, right? She... I went to her page, actually, and she actually has a couple pictures. Maybe because of this, where she's taking her glasses off now. Like she's trying to get ahead of it? Maybe. Maybe that's what it is. I, mean, I would. See? Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn, I gotta go. I don't, I don't think I follow her, bro. But she does. I'm gonna does. <laughs> whip my phone out, man. Go on, throw it up. But yeah. she had like 10 million. She probably got 10 million in one. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, bro. She, she still wears glasses, by the way. But now it's more alluding to the brand. And I love the way her did stuff because she walked people through yeah. her brand. She was first this mysterious. Artists, you literally do not know how they looked, how she looked at all. You all you knew was a silhouette. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. People didn't know who the person was. She could have been black, white, whatever. Now you finally see her. But when you see her, she's in like these shrouded environments, right? It's dark, it's silhouette. So even though you understand it, okay, this is a black young lady, she got glasses on, she's in these environments so it's still a little bit mysterious and you can't quite nail her face people did like background and they like found out who she was um as a kid but she's still playing the game and now as long as she's still playing the game and you know she's playing the game you're still in the game as you experience it right then she start kind of taking away some of the dimmer environments it might be a sunny day in LA in the video or something like that, right? But she still got the glasses on. So she's still not letting you in all the way, right? Slowly graduate. And now there's been quite a few moments in time at this point where, yeah, no glasses. I'm out here just like a regular person. However, people aren't making as big of a deal. Her face car isn't as strong, which is probably what she desires, or at least that's, that's what comes with it. Hmm. But she can always put the glasses on and it creates this element of like the Clark Clint Kent Superman effect, right? Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I'm in that zone now. You know what type of time I'm in when I'm on that when I put my glasses on. So walking people through your brand experience, this is a perfect example of what I try to tell artists when it comes to trying to do everything at once versus giving yourself time to evolve. Having the confidence, go back to that confidence yeah. to know that. Things are strong. Things are real when you do them over time. And so many artists are thinking, I have to go so big and make this massive oppression in a second and go viral and do everything at once. That's why they get paralysis analysis, right? That's why they get overwhelmed and thinking, man, I can't make this stuff happen. But yeah. but the best cases are usually like her. Yeah, bro. They were trying to figure out how to make five years worth of decisions in three months. <laughs> Facts. And then wonder why your your heart about to give up, man. So you gotta <laughs> chill out, bro. Like we got time, man. Chill out. Chill out. Bro. Chill out, yeah. chill out. Nah, but it's, yeah, it's father, but they basically so they basically built her like the weekend. Like they took a similar approach to early weekend. I didn't know that because I yeah. came in when she was at least showing herself a lot more. That's what that's why I came into the, the story. Yeah. And then yeah, like I said, this is my first time seeing her without the glasses on. So I'm still taking it in right now. Right. Well, <laughs> you you got the follow on her now, so you yeah. gonna, you gonna catch it every step of the way. Oh yeah, I'm in there. I might turn the post notifications on. You know I, mean? I got. I feel like I got a lot of catching up to do. You know what I'm saying? You find yourself in the DMs. I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like real, it's random. But every now and again, I do shoot a shot at a random celebrity just to see if it happen. Just to see. Just to see. Cause you never know, man. You know. Hey, you, know like, you never know who watched the podcast. She could be watching right now. I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's fine, but. Hey, bro, I'm hoping for you. Appreciate you know that. Saying? Thank you. I'm hoping for you. Thank you, man. Thank Look, you. I, I really do mean that. I would love <laughs> a 500k. Or her's boyfriend. I'm gonna take that meeting with her's boyfriend if it's Jacory. <laughs> I thought you were saying when I take 500k, I'll be her boyfriend. Nah, nah. Like, I think that's the same answer though. Yeah, I was like, I'm definitely <laughs> taking the, <laughs> taking to be her boyfriend, bro. Easy. Hey, but we we, we might have revealed your card too early though, because now you're out here looking like a <sighs> like a trap. That's true. <laughs> Damn. I ain't mean to hurt if you hear that. I take it back. <laughs> It was just for the content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he only a thought for the content. He not a thought of real life. 
Our next subject, though, let's get it to Wiz Khalifa. Because Wiz Khalifa dropped oh, some company. game, but I think it's more context. He didn't put enough of the game in the content itself. He just gave you a, a touch of it. We're going we're gonna to unpack this because artists, I've seen more and more artists think this way. He's one of the fewest, fewer artists that I truly feel like, hey, he's living his best life. Yeah. I see Wiz, I'm like, yo, Wiz living good. I forget about him. And then I come back and I'm like, yo, Wiz is- They all healthy and shit. Yeah, dude, <laughs> healthy dude look like he not in the drama and the, the headlines. So let me play this clip. Uh-oh. But I don't even have to physically show up for it. So if I have companies that I don't have to physically show up for like, that are bringing me millions of dollars, with that. I can spend a ton of time with my son. You know what I'm saying? Passive income. I worked income. for that. Yeah, I, affo- I afforded myself that. And I made sure that, you know, I, I made that comfortability for myself. A lot of people don't think about that shit. They just mm. think money, 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 show, 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 blah, blah, blah. But or my company. All right. Now. First thing I think is important to to note about this, Wiz Khalifa is talking about, oh, I own all these businesses, I'm investing in things, I don't have to be there. We we are familiar with the concept of passive income. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know what? What is Wiz a part of? Because you don't ever hear it. You hear mm-hmm. Jay-Z announcing all these deals and making PR. So I looked up a couple companies. All right. Wiz, you go to Crunchbase. All right, one company in this portfolio here is called, let's see, where'd it go? No, they only got them under one company. Personal investment. There we go, Liquid Death. What? Yes. What? Yes. I did not know that. I had no idea either. That's crazy. Liquid Death. If y'all ever had Liquid Death, Liquid Death is some water and actually... If you know what liquid death is, it makes all the sense so in the world. Sense, bro. It makes all the sense in the world that uh, Wiz Khalifa is invested in it. I just got on the liquid death wave like two weeks ago. Because that regular water is disgusting. Their sparkling water, the best sparkling water. I haven't water had their sparkling water. Amazing, I've, bro. I've seen you with it before, though. Like I, I thought it. it was the regular, though. Nah, hell no. Nah. The okay. regular water is gross, bro. Yeah. But the sparkling, amazing. But S tier. S tier sparkling water. I'm gonna have to check that one out. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that out. So Liquid Death is one of them, right? Crazy, and obviously, why does he need to be there? Wiz probably wouldn't even know what to do if he was there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a business he put his money into. Um, right investors make sense for your brand. All the sense in the world. See another brand that he's a part of. Yeah, I saw some kitchen. Rap star Wiz Khalifa has invested in PFL MMA and will serve as an advisor to the fight firm. Oh, that's fine. Yes. Okay. Professional Fighters League. And they're making real deals. It's a it's a league. Again, they, they have MMA. But um, I, I, there was some big fight that I saw that they were trying to get the contract for. I wish I could remember who it was. It would be like a set. It might have been like Jake Paul or something like that, trying to get his fight or sign Jake Paul or, or Logan Paul. Okay. I think it was something like that. Right, but yet another thing, put his money into makes sense for his brand. He can be present, but he doesn't have to be involved in the day to day. It's more him being him. I get it. I love it. Yeah, See, you just advising, bro. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a couple phone calls a month. Exactly. <laughs> now we can go to the core competency. Yeah, Taylor Gang Entertainment. Yeah. All right. Well, of course, that was one of his first. That was the business that you know he ran business for himself through that as an artist. Who were there? Uh, who was there? contract with because didn't they have some kind of jv or still have a jv probably i don't even know i ain't about to my instincts say interscope but i don't even let's know. see independent record label so his his re- independent record label which i didn't either i didn't know or i forgot that burner was involved in that which is crazy considering that burner has the like damn near billion dollar weed company at this point yeah uh, let's see. He had Juicy J, right? Yeah. But he, he had his own indie record label. Where and a lot of times, a lot of people and artists y'all assume that the artist is going to be the active person when you sign to their label. But typically, they're just offering you their resources. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's you, the reality. You look if they even know what the fuck going on. Yes, you are lucky. <laughs> you are you lucky, are lucky bro. <laughs> because if it's an active artist, they do not have time. Yeah. To be the business person for you. Yeah. So. The benefit is there should be some level of competency for within that artist team because obviously they know how to make moves for that bigger artist. 
here's the other problem. I'll throw this in there, though, even though this is in, in the main game that we're trying to talk about in this segment. Artists have completely different resources, right? So you think about a manager. What was the surprise when we first started like leveling up and having all these clients where they have a big artist, right? As they're, this manager has a big old artist, they make however many millions, yet they have this other artist that has a budget of, what was that one, $5,000 yeah, for a year? For a year, bro. And you're like, yo, but this person also manages who I want to say. Let's just say this person manages Glorilla, Buster Rhymes, and Drake. And Drake. Yeah. And literally, it could be those three. And this other artist that they have will be a $5,000 budget for the year. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that each individual artist is their own individual business. So it's not like a regular business where you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put my resources and financial capital and reinvest. They're going to flip resources that they have from the relationships they built with Drake, mm -hmm. Busta Rhymes, Glorilla, and then try to flip them for you into your business and grow it that way. But if you think about it, oh, I made money from my business with Drake. Drake would be like, what the hell are you doing putting my money into this nobody artist, yeah, right? Yeah. Or a somebody artist. It could be, you know, let's say the weekend. Like, why are you taking my money and <laughs> investing it over there? It's not that way. The manager itself is his own company. He's making commission through each artist, right? Or royalty, whatever y'all deal is set up, right? But it's not the same company. And I think a lot of artists... Or people who are trying to go work for people, and obviously the agencies like like us, right? You had you go through that initial shock without understanding that these are all separate entities, and just because someone has a big artist doesn't mean any of that applies to the other artists. Yeah, nice. Learned, <laughs> learned that lesson the hard way. <laughs> so many times, I feel like I learned like once a year because that's how they hey, get you, bro. They be like, "Oh, I work with you. such and such." Where? And then they be like, "Yeah, but I want you to work." <laughs> little homie over here, he's like, man, come on, bro. Why, why you ain't leave with that, man? Got me. Clickbait. You knew what you were doing. That, that's exactly what it is. It's <laughs> social clickbait, the conversational clickbait. They kill me with that. But back to Wiz, let's go run through a couple of these other businesses. Gage Growth Corp and Wiz Khalifa's Khalifa Kush announced a partnership. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the Khalifa, Khalifa Kush is, is doing quite well. I didn't know that Wiz Khalifa had a restaurant. It's probably out of one of those ghost kitchens, mm -hmm. right? But he has the hot box that's company. Called, okay, I was say it's called hot box. That's why. Yep, hot box. And right now it's only in New York, right? But it's yet another business that's extension of his brand. Ninety-nine so, point. Look, to me, I think it's interesting to hear people talk that talk. Oh yeah, you gotta, you know, be an entrepreneur, flip your money somehow. And then it's nice to talk the talk that, oh, passive income, da, da, da. But it's more interesting to get an understanding of like, all right, what businesses are you running, bro? Where are you investing your money? And then do you have a strategy on how these things connect? Yeah. I don't need to know everything. You know, if you feel like there's some sauce or whatever, I don't need to know the sauce. But like, what's your overall thinking? Oh, I want to have things that are connected to my brand and make sense. So it's an extension hot box, right? Oh, mm -hmm. Khalifa Kush. Oh, okay, I get it. So the MMA thing. The MMA. He started yeah. doing all the workouts and being okay. It makes sense, right? Versus someone else might be saying, I'm trying to find things that have nothing to do with my brand and I'm going to just do real estate and go super hard on real estate. Like, want to hear your strategy. And I feel like that's something that we need to make happen. Yeah. We need to have more conversations or like when we start interviewing people and get into that space, that's something that we want to get into and dig into. Yeah, we should ask every single person, yo, what, what, what other businesses you got? What other business you got? What Still, you doing with yeah. it? Because sometimes I really do hear about some like really interesting stuff. Very interesting. Scenes, and you're like, oh shit, bro. I yep. never, like that'd be artists that are surface level, but you just think they're like, I hate to say it, but you just think they're like dumbasses. You know what I'm saying? Or just or whatever. <laughs> and then you learn about them on the back end. They're like, oh, I do this and this and this. And I'm running this. You're like, God damn, bro. Yeah. Why don't you talk about that more? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think that you're a dumbass, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> I get it. You know, Sometimes like, dumbassery is the game. You, I have to look like a dumbass so people. That is true. You know, I throw them off my scent. They don't know that I'm moving like I'm moving. That is that is true. That is, that's true. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, I got you. Aha. Uh -huh. Got you. Got, so, I think that's a game within the game, mm. and 
you know, a lot of times people do think, oh, this person is just moving and making all this money off of music. And sometimes that person might be 20% music. Yeah. <laughs> but it goes back to like the three or five year thing we said about yeah. it. Really like what I've kind of seen is like most of the bigger artists try to like cap enough in that three to five year window to have enough money to go start making money somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So like I need to collect all the chips while this shit's going my way and start redistributing them into some other shit before, you know, my stock starts to plummet. Exactly. I mean, Wiz still streams like great. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure he still gets a great Crazy. show price, but it probably ain't shit. Liquid Death alone, bro. It probably ain't nothing close to that, bro. Oh, and then the weed shit, because he was really early to the whole like weed business thing. So mm-hmm. I can't even imagine just like how that's grown and what connections he made in that world since, you know? So yeah, that's just how crazy. often do you hear about Wiz Khalifa? Every, maybe like every four or five business months. Any, business month thing? Yeah, maybe every four or five business <laughs> months. Hey, we making it. Right? <laughs> and, and it's always good stuff. It is always good stuff. Yeah. You don't really hear about crazy drama, all the extra stuff. He looks in this good mood. We open up talking about him like that. Yeah. Because that shit is doing well. Yeah. And I don't have to be here on tour crazy just to get along. That's what he said. That was the whole point of everything. Bro, the yeah. lifestyle that I want to live is more sp- time with my son that really matters to me there's certain levels of ability that was required i can't always be traveling but you could very well say i want to be on the road all the time most of those people haven't been on the road enough Mm -hmm. to know that you don't want to be on the road all the time but like i think that's the um important part about it too it's just when you especially when you start strategizing about where you want to go with things like what lifestyle do you want to live of course you can be rich, but there's different types of rich. Yeah. Like, and we've seen it. And you can get your money in different types of ways. Yeah. Pick your poison. What problems you want to deal cement with? Niggas. You said who niggas? Fuck them cement niggas. <laughs> I ain't never gonna let that go, bro. That shit that's it. That's that shit's that crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh yeah, because we were talking about the bricks. <laughs> yeah, bro. That's what I'm, saying. I'm never letting that go. Like I'm yeah. in the wrong business. Yeah, hey. I need to be selling fucking bricks. Take actual bricks. Simple. For people listening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like cement bricks. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we, we know uh you know a song can be used against you, so a, a pod definitely might. What what you mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. we don't want yeah, you to know why it's a Rico <laughs> <laughs> type situation. <laughs> it was like you said on podcast number seventeen, which I don't think I said by the way, you know. Oh, yeah. You made the 17. bricks. Yeah. yeah, you made the bricks statement. You made the bricks statement. Which reminds me before we hit this last topic, if Y'all aren't aware, we are doing consultations limited to December 31st. If y'all want to talk with us one-on-one, we'll put the link in the bio. It's a holiday deal. It's going to be 50% off only for these remaining days of 2022. Check the link in the bio one-on-one with either me or Jacory. You don't get to choose. It's going to be a little random thing, but if you're interested in that, so we can help you with your plan for next year and build out your rollout with you and your team, make that happen. Link in the bio. But the last topic, man, mm. why these artists who are thinking that they can just create a Patreon and get rich, create some type of subscription program and get rich, they, they think it's easy. And there's a lot of faux pas that are occurring, and I want to talk about that. Let's get into it. All right. I want to say this. There's a lot of industries that are selling y'all and don't understand this industry. If I'm a tech company and I build this platform that I provide for other people, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this person is a creator. Mm -hmm. So... I should convince them that they should offer exclusive creations on my platform and then build this fan club and build, sell this merch, all these things, right? Because it makes so much sense when I look at all these other verticals that have found success, but they might not understand how music money comes in. They might not understand how your fan base spends money. And that's the most important part in general. How do Fans in 2022, 2023, 24, think about artists. What is that entire relationship like? Because we've been trained to consume music for free and look at people differently. So if they don't understand any of that stuff, which none of them do, 
right? Because they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe the numbers look like that. You get paid so little. They don't understand this shit. <laughs> you probably don't want to just, you probably want to take what they say with a massive grain of salt, yeah. right? Throw some pepper in there, to make it seasoned salt because it tastes better. You know what I mean? That's what you want to do. Now, what are these problems? Let's get into it. The first thing that I see, uh, I'm going to start with product, all right? If you want to do this right, you have to think, what am I providing for people in terms of value? And if you go back to the example I used where an artist throws a show, people come to this show. My whole goal is, let me get as many people into this show as possible. And when I have 100 people in a crowd, I'm like, oh my gosh, 100 people in this are in this crowd and I'm satisfied. I throw the show. Nobody super complains, so I think I'm good. But now I'm wondering why it doesn't become easier and easier to get these same people out. It's because my product wasn't great. I was happy about getting people to see me. I didn't think about providing value from them and making sure they had the dopest experience, right? Mm. That same applies to your subscription, whatever they're subscribing to. People think, oh, I'm just going to throw some songs that I didn't put out and put it in my subscription program. All right, are they the best songs in the world? Do people even think, oh, I consumed the best song in the world, so I'm going to pay for it consistently? And then also, if you dropped an amazing song that month, that means you still have to pay for it again to justify the next month, yeah. right? So your experience for these people has to be specific to whatever they find value in. So you got to know your fan base and is likely something that's going to take a lot more work than just not putting the full version. Like if we just said, hey, we're going to provide all the snippets of this podcast behind a paywall, we probably have some people who would pay for it. Or we say we want to put the full episode behind the paywall. We'll probably have some people to pay for it. But that experience isn't going to scale for most people. Yeah. Right? You can't be specific enough. Now, why is that important? If you're just providing entertainment, which is your music, you're providing some behind the scenes videos because you think, oh, people will love to see behind the scenes. You're just talking about entertainment. Mm -hmm. Who are you competing with? Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, YouTube, Disney Plus, Crunchyroll, 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 Crunchyroll. What's that? It's an animated streaming platform. Oh, I never heard of that one actually. It's far. Just fuck with it. I used to watch animes on uh, <laughs> what was that shit? Uh, Crackle back in the day. Oh, yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> golly, he sounds so disgusted. <laughs> but <laughs> but you're competing with all these platforms. If you're competing with these platforms, just think about it. People are you're already trying to figure out how can I not have to pay for HBO Plus or not have to pay for Hulu Plus? You think they're gonna pay five, twelve dollars just for one single artist? How much content are you gonna create to compete with that? How entertainment entertaining are you gonna be? unlikely yeah it's just unlikely they might buy it at first because oh my gosh it feels good you got me hype in a moment because you might be good at selling but what keeps people using a product the product itself yeah. so you have to truly think about what that experience is because they're going to leave if you want to have um they're going to leave once they realize eh, i got to rearrange my life and cut some things out. And we're going to get into the leaving segment um, in a section, but the biggest thing that understanding the product can get you to is thinking about what's the purpose that they're joining this thing in the first place. Because some people can get away with barely putting out enough if at least the context is that. Oh, I'm just going to get some extra songs so you don't have to do all that much extra work because these might be some of your quote unquote throwaways and they're completely happy with that. You're probably not going to get all your fan base or all that many, but if you have the right type of fan base where they're audio files, you know, maybe they're cool with that. If that's the expectation you set. Yeah. But you likely are going to need a mission and a vision for them to buy into far bigger. Like, what are they doing for you? Are they supporting you because you're about to go on tour? All right. And this is a part of that. All right? Are they helping you? not have to sign to a record label who typically treat artists wrong and you doing this is going to help you 
invest in a tour that's going to help you invest in merch that's going to help you invest in starting your own label or signing other artists or creating some content series that you can sell off the vision has to be there because the stronger the vision now at least people are beginning to be justified and it's not even about oh i'm creating content and i got some exclusive merch right it's oh i'm supporting something all right that's and now i'm supporting it and i'm paying for that vision to help him get there in a subscription setup versus just paying him $200 at one time. Yeah. All right. I'm paying him $200 over time and he's working on that. So that's a different way to think. Are you selling him a vision that can help? All right. If you have something specific, you're providing set expectations because the reality is when people leave, which most people do, subscription programs, how are you going to replace them? And if you're like, oh man, at one point I'm going to get my shit to 10,000 subscribers. Well, if 20 people are leaving a week, that means you got to replace those 20 people and get another 100 people, yeah. right? So now you realize you're only gaining 80 people a week. And then how do you gain 80 people a week? Well, you have to Keep on keeping on. Like you got to keep posting content, keep growing. Because if you stop, then that 80 people become 60 people a week. And the next thing you know, you stop and now you're losing people. People see the same shit happen when they're doing bots, right? Yeah. You're basically experiencing yeah. that within your own program, right? You have to consistently grow. And we're not talking about no fake stuff. We're not talking about people who aren't like legit fans and, and you brought them in for some tricky reason. The natural process of subscription programs is people to churn out over time people will leave everybody experiences that so you think oh i got 100 people and i'm good for now no the, that 100 is going to become 50 in a few months mm -hmm. right so if you always have to replace it now you're running uphill trying to post more while you're doing more in the community for somebody to pay you five dollars a month five dollars a month because this is what a lot of people are starting with when i see artist programs five dollars a month that's sixty dollars a year you know, you could have just sold two pieces of merch. It's a great way to look at it. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. And fans are happy to pay for that merch. Yeah. Now you have to figure out instead, though, how do I convince them to be happy that they're paying me $5 a month? It's a completely different set of expectation. I got to completely reframe everything, give them a reason for them to feel justified to do this every month. And I'm doing all this extra content when somebody who's a fan enough and truly messes with me, they'd be happy to pay me for two thirty dollars shirts. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the people who are on the higher end would, would pay more. Just do the numbers and get it in one bunch versus doing it over subscriptions because you're going to work harder and all that energy that you're putting for behind the scenes for a growing artist. This is more so for growing artists, by the way, like you're starting off and your fan base isn't super strong. Like you could be putting that into more content. It's already bad enough that you got to create social media content in the first place on top of your music and then do all these other things. Don't add extra workload to yourself behind the scenes. And still try to keep up your clip to grow because if you don't grow, you're only going to end up in a deficit in your subscription program because churn is natural. It doesn't make sense. And I think a lot of artists are being sold into that model without understanding the pros and cons of the model, but also how to do it right. Because you can do it right. Subscriptions are a beautiful thing, but you have to have the right expectations. And again, if I'm selling $5 a month, it just doesn't make sense, bro. Yeah. It, it, it just doesn't. All right. I get it to get the experience and maybe even see who rocks with me to do stuff like that. But if you can sell a hundred people on $5 a month, trust me, you can sell enough merch to, to take up for that yeah. Like, period. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I, I, I always try to, cause I, I still personally haven't seen a subscription model done right or well with an artist. I, I can never think of one off the top of my head. Cause I want yeah. a devil's advocate, but I can't think of nobody. Yeah. Yet. How? How can you? <laughs> how can you devil's advocate, bro? Like nothing's. Come, I'm trying so hard, and nothing's coming to me. Maybe it's mine in the comments to say something, but if y'all yeah. see somebody, yeah, yeah y'all know somebody who's killing the subscription game for an artist, yeah, then let us know. But there's so many ways to make revenue that fans are already happy to give to an artist, right? Fans want to buy the merch, right? 
Fans want to buy show tickets, yeah. right? Fans want to buy vinyl, right? We've already been seeing this stat that vinyl has been exploding. It's doing better than MP3s, tapes, and all those other things, right? I, it's growing faster than streaming, I believe, if I remember correctly. Granted, it's still smaller than streaming. Streaming is easier to 5X, right, when you're smaller. But vinyl is going crazy. People love vinyl. All right. And we can have a whole nother conversation about that. We might get Jocelyn on to talk to her about that because she's <laughs> big on vinyl. Yeah. Right. But there's so many ways that fans are already looking to exchange with you. Yeah. And instead of exchanging in the way that they want, you're now trying to sell them on something completely different that they're not asking for. Yeah. All right. And that doesn't make sense until you understand at least how to take advantage of the things that are already in place. Yeah. That's the way I see it. Yeah, no, I think some like the, the distinction is important. You made like you said, you have to always think about the end user experience and what what do they want? Because I, I do think there are a lot of examples of artists and creators putting out what they feel like the audience wants, and a lot of the times the audience is directly telling you what they want. Mm-hmm. Like I had a, I had a homie once that um like his audience is wanting him to drop merch. They're just like, bro, please draw some merch. Like, please, a hoodie, t-shirt, hat, mm-hmm. some socks, nigga, something. Please put some merch out. And he talked about doing, like, some uh, some event for them. Like, he wanted to put together an event. And he's like, I think that'd be cool. We could do it. I'm like, bro, they just asked for t-shirts, bro. Like, give, <laughs> give them the t-shirts. <laughs> give them the t-shirts and the hat. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is maybe the event does do well, and you funnel it and you use it to sell merch. That was a possibility. At the time, I didn't think about that. Now, I kind of wish I thought about that, but. I'm like, but what is probably going to happen is that you know, they're going to have the fans that can't get to it. It's not as accessible to some. He had, a lot of his fans were young, so a lot of them parents probably won't even let them fucking go, right? And then you're going you're gonna to see that this thing possibly didn't work out the way that you thought it would work out. And all you're going to be thinking about is like, damn, these niggas just want a T-shirt. I could just gave everybody a T-shirt. Way less work. Way less work, bro, than putting an event together and, and handling and that still logistics. still having bro. to sell T-shirts. Yeah, like just to <laughs> recoup. And, you know, for most people, bro, events are like lost leader, loss leaders. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like It's about the look and the content. And hopefully the other shit makes his money back. So, um, But I always think about it because I see ours do that a lot. They'd be like, oh, no, like I'm going to give them this and this and this. And it's like, bro, like one, this is your audience. You can just talk to them and ask them what they want. You know, mm. fans are very vocal. Especially ones that get asked questions from their artists, because most artists aren't asking their fans questions. So when they you ask them their opinion, but they will gladly tell you what they want. Oh, oh, a, a, a cup would be cool. Cup. All right, you know, ten of y'all ask for cups. All right, I'm making cups. You know, yeah. something like that. So it's like when you can just directly talk to the audience, which I don't think enough artists do, and I, I don't think a lot of them see it as valuable. Right? We typically try to see artists like put really strong barriers between them and the fan base, and maybe not have as many interactions. But when it comes to selling them shit. Like you gotta look at God what they're saying. It. You know, it's like like us with our products and services and stuff, but we read all the comments on like every social we're on, right? Like there was a point where we was taking like every call for a person, people that was interested. Like we did a lot to like be able to like understand the people that were spending money with us. I'm like, yo, well, like, what do you what do you want from me? You know what I'm saying? Like like you keep telling me you want to spend some money over here, yeah. like what do you want from me? And eventually the offer comes together based on that, right? Um, based on that feedback. So that's the one thing I kind of will also like a lot of artists to get from this is like, bro, just talk to your audience and let them kind of like guide you to what you want to make, what you sh- could make money on because that shit will save you a lot of time and headache. Like you said, like, then you, you're not jumping through hoops to try shit just because you heard about it or you seen a video about it, that it might work. It's like, no, bro, ask them what they want for you and then make money on that and then maybe eventually start experimenting with the other shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean... Look, man, I I think that a huge part of the disconnect is have you ever wanted something but not enough to do the things that you had to do to get it? Yeah, 100%. Even. That's what the disconnect is. Yeah. It's like, dang, I just wanted that T-shirt, but you said I got to go to this site, sign up, put my name, join Put my name in the newsletter. Verify the email. Yeah, verify the email. <laughs> you know what, bro? I'm just going to go do something else. Yeah. All right? And that's what artists are doing a lot of times. Yeah. It's like, I just asked for t-shirts. <laughs> you said I got to go to this event or I got to wait till after this event. Yeah. Like, and, and it's all this extra stuff and it's overload. It's overload. So keep it simple, especially in the beginning. You don't have to overthink these experiences you see some of these artists that actually do some really in-depth experiences on some kanye type stuff Mm -hmm. but understand they have their artists audiences attention in a different way yeah 
all right, where they can do that and people are going to wait. So back to the subscriptions specifically, for most people, especially when you're starting out, the numbers just do not make sense. All right. You can make the same amount of money or more if you just sell. All right. And you will put yourself in a better position to just focus on understanding how to bring in new people versus trying to capitalize on those couple that you already have. Mm -hmm. Because the first problem of having a subscription program is going to be, well, how do I grow this thing? Yeah. How do I grow it? Because the moment you have five people, you're going to realize those five people are going to become four people. And you, it sucks when you see that shit going backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and then you start feeling like these people don't even value this. Why am I putting work, creating all this extra content when they don't even care? Yeah. Right. And now you're upset that someone just got out for five dollars and your life is focused on five dollars. Remember when we had. Shit, I'm, I was telling you, I'm like, man, bro, this person arguing about me over $20. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. this is going to make a big difference in my life, thinking that we scabbing them or da, 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 da. Like, you start to now be focused on moving the needle on, on a, a number so small. And it, it makes sense when you got a tech platform that might be the scale and you also move on data. It works without you after a period of time because it's software. That's a completely different game. But when you're selling yourself and I got to create this content, it you're going to find yourself having a headache and even devaluing your own efforts when you start getting demoralized by those numbers going down and the subscription program not moving fast enough. That's just from what I see, especially for the people who don't understand the things that we just talked about. You got any other thoughts on that, though? No, nah, man. I thought that was well said. All right. Well, <laughs> in that case, we up out of here. So that was episode number 17. Catch us every Tuesday and Thursday. Appreciate y'all for who are rocking with us this far. If you know anybody who is interested in getting a job in the industry, y'all need to send them this pod because this one was a shout out especially for them. Not just the regular artists, but people who are trying to navigate and make money. Once again, this is No Labels Necessary. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. <laughs>